Hallelujah. Glory to God. We will try not to spend more time today. Hallelujah. You can, Father, we thank you. We give you the praise. Even as we get into your word, I pray the Lord you will speak to us, open our eyes, open our understanding in Jesus' name. Father, reveal to us your word. I pray that, Lord, that the mis hidden mysteries, the hidden manna, the hidden mysteries within your word, that, Father, you begin to unveil, or you begin to reveal, or you begin to unveil, you begin to interpret, you begin to translate, Father, the, the deep things within your word. Father, we open our ear gates and our heart to receive from you. Speak to us. Let your word flow with light and let the fear of God brood over us today. Father, we thank you for the illumination of your word today. Make us very hungry for your word. Let us have access to the very manna from your throne. As you speak, let us be strengthened and revived and empowered in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you blessed today? Glory to God. Glory to God. Say, Madelius. Mango Dabalabadosh. Amen. What a God we serve. We were dealing with the heavens. Amen. I know that if you have been praying with us extensively, we will be praying about opening our heavens. Amen. And now we are seeing so many things happening in the realm of the spirit nowadays. Hallelujah. Many things are happening. In this month of October, hallelujah. It's a it's a very powerful, powerful, powerful month. Is the month of the supernatural amen particularly the first two weeks of the first two weeks two weeks of october is a very explosive month it's very explosive the days of new beginning god is about to release his glory like never before amen hallelujah we give you the praise we give you the praise we give you the praise Come on, go ahead and just pray in the spirit for a second. Begin to pray, pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit, pray in the Holy Ghost, pray in the Holy Ghost. Lega la baha, rebebi abarando rebebios, mende rebebe rebebe kapa, ragada rababa, shande rebebe haba. Just go ahead, levate lebebe aparadia. Let the Lord begin to quicken you. Regada rebebe abaradi, zande bada rababa rebebe kapaya. Ele bende rebebe rebebe kabarandosh, ragada rebebe rebebe abarando rebebios. Zade Badaraba by Abradi, thank Command to Lebebe Abradish, Erebebebebebebebebe Abradish. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Zabadaraba by us, Regederebebe Abradish. Thank you, my Father. Ele bele bebe abaradish, reke de rebe bebe abaradia, shande de bebe abarados. I bless your name, Jesus. I give you the glory. Hallelujah. Zada baraba rebe bia, ela bandele bebe abaradish, mas zada baraba baka bando rebe bios. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Particularly, this is the this is the second this is the second day. This is the this is the second day for this month. Amen. The very second day, and we bless God for what He's about to do. Um, what you are seeing here in the book of Genesis, chapter 8. In the book of Genesis, chapter 8, he says something very powerful. And God remembered Noah, every living thing, and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth, and the waters as waged. Now Prior to this, he was instructed because God was about to pass judgment on the earth. Amen. And for we see that this man built an ark. Amen. Got inside the ark, got all the animals, obeyed the Lord. And before you know it, there was a river swimming all over. I mean, and the place was flooded with water. Amen. Amen. But this man was kept by God. Kept by God. Amen. And there was, you could, you could tell that in there he was, there was, he was going through some supernatural provision. There was supernatural, it was, pro everything was provided for him supernaturally. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, look at what it says. It says, verse 2, the fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped. And the rain from heaven were restrained. And the waters returned off the earth continually. And after the end of the 150 days of the water, we are abated. Look at what it says. And the ark rested in the seventh month. On the 17th, 
day of the month upon the mountains of, of Arahat. Hallelujah. We're talking about the seventh month. Now look at what it says now. And the waters decreased continually until the tenth month. The waters decreased continually until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountain seen. And it came, and it came to pass at the end of the forty days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. He began to see the mountain top. That was the first thing he saw. That was a great sign that God has abated. God is now rescuing him. He began to see that the hour has come. The awaited prophecy is now come for him to enjoy the benefit. I'm hearing the Lord say, some of you were rescued from the waters, rescued from affliction kept by his mighty hand and i hear the lord says now is the time in this month of october the bible god says i'm bringing you to a place of rest i'm bringing you to a place of rest you will begin to see the annihilation of your enemies this is when your enemies will begin to bow to you and look on you as their source god is about to exalt you in your family those who have tried wickedness against you I am telling you, God will literally raise you up like never before. Many projects that has been abandoned, that it seems like you could not do nothing. In this month of October, everything will begin to come together. All the projects, you will begin to see grace like never before. You will literally feel the hand of God, the hand of the Lord, the Lord, will prepare you to speed. The mountain symbolizes a, a time with the Lord, the time to dine with God, a greater height with God. Eagles are found on the mountain. Eagles are found on the mountain. Chickens are not found on the mountain. Amen. Amen. Listen to me. Your best is about to emerge in this October, this month of October. You begin to experience unusual open doors. I hear the Lord greatly. You're going to see opportunities like never before. In this month of October, there is a double grace that God is releasing upon you. It's going to come speedily, speedily, speedily. I'm hearing God saying it. <laughs> Listen to me. People began to come out of the ark. You've been in hiding. I hear the Lord says, this is the time. Come out now. God is bringing you out, opening the doors, doors that were shut against you. You will begin to experience the blessings of the Lord, even upon your life. You have been in hiding, in wilderness. It's like nobody has been hearing your voice. Amen. As Jesus came out of Nazareth, so are you coming out of Nazareth. As Jesus entered into a days of performance, this month of October shall be your month of performance in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. What was has not moved in previous months? This month of October, this month of October, you to begin to move. D listen to me. Your ark is the same place that happened to 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 to, to Joseph. The Bible says he was kept in a prison. He was in a prison. He was in a prison until his word came. Until his word came. Until his word came. In this month of October, beginning from day one, day one, day one, your king will locate you. Your king will locate you. I say your king will locate you. You will begin to shave the old mentality. You will begin to shave your beards, change your clothes, and you will be begin to dine with the kings. You will begin to dine with great men. Listen to me. You begin to wonder, how come I didn't do it previous months? No, you were in waiting season. But now, the waters are abated. The, the waters have been abated. And God has not released you now. It's a, fruit, it's a time of joy. It's a time of celebration. It's a time of rejoicing. And the Bible says, look at what it says. Hallelujah. Listen to me. This word I'm receiving now is as a result of the heavens we just prayed. Amen. It's not as a result of something I prepared. I've, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Look at what it says. And it's... Amen. Glory to God. Look at what it says. And verse 18. And Noah went forth, and his sons and his wives, amen, his wife and his sons' wives with him. Every beast creeping thing and every fowl whatsoever creeping on the earth after their kinds went forth out of the ark. And verse 20. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord. An altar unto the Lord, and offered burnt offering on the altar, and the Lord smelt the sweet savour, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more everything living. Hallelujah. Listen to me. God turned around the situation. God turned around the judgment. Mercy was being released. Amen. Hallelujah. Hmm. 
Look at what it says in verse 22. And the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest. It means that all you have sown in the past, in this month of October, you will begin to reap your benefits. God will begin to cause your name to be remembered by great people. Amen. Suddenly, the book of remembrance will be opened for you. Suddenly, I prophesy, suddenly, your applications, they will begin to call you. They will begin to call you for job appointments. In the name of Jesus Christ, people that have you, that are owing you will begin to release the money, will begin to release the blessings upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Paul says the living God. Amen. Amen. This is the message and the word of the Lord for this month of October. Amen. Somebody receive that word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, um, one thing I've noticed recently is that there is a message. I was reading something recently. Uh, so is it today or yesterday? And I says, My God, what a revelation. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 8, verse 10. Acts chapter 8, verse 10. Acts chapter 8, verse 10. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Acts chapter 8. I'm just read it from verse 8. I'm just read chapter 8. Hallelujah. There's just something. There's a mystery behind this. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There's a mystery behind this. Zade Barabaka Zolva Acts chapter 8. Okay. Let me just read. Let me just read from verse 1. Saul was consenting unto his death at, at the time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem and there was they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judah, Samaria except for the apostles. The devout men carried Stephen to his burial, made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church. Entering into every house, healing men and women, committed them to prison. Hallelujah. I'm just reading, amen. Therefore, they, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria. How many of you know that Philip has been led by God? When you read Philip, Philip was transported by the Spirit of God. God began to use Philip in a great and powerful way. Amen. Hallelujah. It, it was, was amazing. After the fall of Stephen, I believe that the mantle fell upon Philip. Amen. Because God was just using him in a powerful way. He never went anywhere. God did not need him. He was supernaturally led by God. Hallelujah. Now, we are seeing this man. Amen. Philip verse 5. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Wait a second. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Look at what it says, verse 7. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, and that were lame were healed. Hallelujah. And there was great joy in the city. I am praying, Jehovah, that the same joy, the same joy will be found that when we begin to go, when we obey the call and we go to India and Pakistan, I'm believing that there will be such great joy in that country as the people are liberated from the shackles and the clutches of Satan in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And there was great joy in that city. But look at what it says in verse 9. This is where I'm going to. But there was a certain man called Simon which before time in the same city used sorcery bewitched the people of samaria giving out that himself was some great one verse 10 to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest saying this man is the great power of god to whom they all gave heed. To the least, to the greatest. The least, to the president. Saying this man is the best. Is sent from God. Hallelujah. Verse 10. Look at what it says. Verse 9. And there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the city, same city, used sorcery. Bewitched the people of Samaria giving out that himself was some of great one to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest saying this man is the great power of god and to him they had regard regard mean they had respect because 
of that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. They looked at him as he operated in the power of God. You know what the Lord said to me? Many Simons has been released to the churches now. Many Simons have trooped into the house of God. And many don't see that anymore. Many Simons entered the prophetic arena. Many Simons, listen this to me. They said what? This man is the great power of God. He was operating in signs and wonders. He was operating in the giftings of the spirit. Many Simons have entered the house of God. Very easy now to receive a title. As long as you can say in the name of Jesus. Many things are happening in the house of God. If your eyes are not open, you will not be able to see. Everyone was bewitched by what sorcery. Look at what it says. To him, verse 11, to him they had regard because of that. He had bewitched all of them. They were all in captivity. The pastor was oppressed. Everyone was oppressed. The word sorcery is witchcraft. They were all in serious captivity. The word sorcery, it comes from the word to capture, to captivate, to control, to hypnotize, to be under a spell, to be blinded under deception, deceptive spirit. So many Simons has been released in every home, in churches now, particularly churches. They come. Pastor, I dreamt about this. I dreamt about it. And many of them now operate in a power gift. Hallelujah. Many of them begin to operate in a power gift. Simon, Simon. People saw him as what? Operating by his gift. And they called him and said, this is the power of God. Some people, they see vision, vision, vision. And they can, hey, they can prophesy. Hallelujah. Some certain things are happening now in the body of Christ. It is crazy. If you are to live holy, I don't mean holy as in outward appearance. If you are really having a genuine heart, it, you will find it hard to work with people, especially in the body of Christ. Because right now there is so much deception, we don't know who to trust anymore. God, Jesus said, I send you amongst, I send you a sheep among the wolves. Hallelujah. But look at what happened in verse 12. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and both women. Then Simon, Simon, look at the revelation now. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip. And one that beholding the miracles and the signs which were done. Simon was not an unbeliever. He got baptized also. He was in the house of God. He was not an usher. He was the leader. And he began, the Bible says, he continued with Philip. He was with Philip. He aligned himself with Philip. These are people that were, when, when, when Philip, he began to see real miracles, real signs, Operating through Philip. And you could see that Simon was interested. Look at what it says. Verse 14. Is somebody hearing me? Are you guys hearing me very well? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In verse 14. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. Hey. Now listen to me. Simon is about to be exposed. Only Philip could not expose him. Remember this, the more light, the more the wolf is being exposed. Are you hearing me today? Now, God is sending reinforcement now. Please listen to me. Please listen to me. It's too, hallelujah, glory to God. Something is happening on the horizon here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Zadebarabaka sadabahaya, mondelebehe, ribibia baraka zondevederistis. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 
And now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard of Samaria and received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. Are you serious? They just received the word of God. So why are you sending Peter and John? We see. Let's read further. Verse 15. Who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was falling upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of Jesus. They laid they, their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. So, while they were praying, something happened. As they began to pray, as they began to seek his face, something happened. They released the power of God. They released the anointing. They released the glory. These guys, because they were under deception, under bewitchment, they could not receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Peter went into the house of Cornelius. As Peter began to declare the word of God, the Bible says, as the word of God was being released, the Bible says the Holy Ghost fell upon them and they began to speak in other tongues. The power of God came upon them. Now we are seeing people who were bewitched, oppressed, tied down by Simon. Now the man of God, three people, not just Peter only, three guys came now preaching the gospel. They could not receive the baptism. The Bible says they only baptized them in water. Until the disciples came and started laying hands on each one of them. Look at what it says. Now remember this. When the Holy Ghost comes, it is the intense light of God revealing. Look at what it says now. Remember this now. Simon is among the disciples now. Simon is hanging out to the big shots. Simon is influencing all of them. Look at what's happened. Now, when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that, now verse 15, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost, for as yet he was falling upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of Jesus. Verse 17, then laid they, they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Look at what it says now, verse 18. Now the strong man reveals himself. And when Simon saw that true laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. He offered them money. Who, who offers you money in the house of God? Who is the minister? Who is the Simon that has been offering you money because they want your gift? Who is the Simon that has been operating, amen, using money to obtain an anointing from your life? Beloved, it's happening in the house of God. They use money to buy influence from you. They use money to buy strange influence. That is very deep. If I go deeper, I don't, I, I would just choose not to. Amen. Hallelujah. He offered them money. Look at what he says. Saying, give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. They begin to see you operate in diverse ways and these Simons, they come around. They begin to give this money. Let me sow. So you can, so you can, so you can release this thing on me. Look at what it says now. Naturally, if you are sowing to God in the man of God, it's a different story. If you are giving us an offering to the Lord, it's a different story. But some people, they use that. They use that to steal. Steal an anointing from people. And it's serious witchcraft now. by sorcery. Let me say this to you now. Look at what it says now. Look at what it says. In verse 20. But Peter, this is not Philip now. But Peter, the guy that came, the guy that has authority, the, 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 almost like the apostle before Paul came, before Paul was saved. But Peter, Jesus says, upon this rock will I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Now, Simon is the gate of hell. Simon is an agent of Satan. Simon is a principality. Simon is a Judas. Simon is an agent of Satan recruiting members in the house of God. Using the house of God to add members to hell. 
Hallelujah. Using the name of Jesus to hide. Hide behind the name of Jesus. Amen. Recruiting members. Initiating people in the church. Hallelujah. Now Peter said unto him. Thy money will perish with thee. Because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Hallelujah. If if a prophet tells somebody, says, thou perish with thy money, everybody will leave the church. They will say, I look at Peter. You are not walking in love. Look at you cursing somebody. Look at you declaring something over somebody. You are you are you are you are wicked. A man come to bless your work. You are cursing him, perish with your money. We say, Who is the man of God that curses people? I'm sure many of you will say that. And the next day there will be rumors all over, all over Facebook. A man of God causes a man that brings money. Peter was seeing something. The Holy Ghost was revealing something that we don't see. Hallelujah. Peter said to him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the God, that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Look at what he says. Thou hast neither part or lot in this matter. For thy heart is not right in the sight of God. This guy's heart was turned against God. He was perverted, filled with wickedness. Repent, verse 22. Therefore, of these, thy wickedness. Pray God, if perhaps the thought of thy heart may be forgiven. I pass for I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Peter is perceiving that this guy is an agent of Satan. When you, years ago, when I read the scripture, I think, or I would think that this Simon is ignorant. No. Look at what it says in verse 24. Then Simon answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. Uh, hallelujah. He said, I'm begging of you. I'm begging of you. I'm begging of you. Please pray to God that those things you spoke over me do not come to pass. Hallelujah. 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 This man oppressed everyone with true sorcery, true witchcraft. It means that not everybody can identify these Simons in the church. Not everyone can see these Simons operating in the church. It only takes people who have a direct connection with Jehovah. People who had a direct encounter with Jesus. People who Jesus released the, uh, the scepter of authority on them. Jesus said to Peter, upon this rock, are you a rock in the house of God? Are you a rock in the house of God? You may operate in giftings. You may operate in diverse ways. But Jesus said to Peter, And the gates of hell shall not prevail. Are you standing by the word of God over your life? You can be an apostle. And you can still be under deception. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at what it says. Just for you to understand. Verse 26. It reveals to us. Look at what it says in verse 13. It says, in verse 26, it says, And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, Arise, go towards the south, unto the way that goeth down to Jerusalem. He arose and went, and behold a man, a Ethiopian man. So what are we seeing here? God spoke to Philip. But Philip did not have the authority to deal with these Simons in the church. Peter had the anointing, the unction, the audacity, the authority to stop every act of wickedness in the church. No Simon. The angel appeared unto Simon. He did not open, he did not open Philip's eyes. Sorry, I said Simon. He didn't open Philip's eyes to deal with such issue. God had to bring Peter to deal with this ruling spirit. Stopping the work of God. Perverting the ways of God. And release judgment upon him. There is a set of authority that God wants to release on this generation. 
And it only takes those who are standing in the office of consecration. Are you hearing me today? On Peter was the main man operating till Paul. God met Paul on the way to Damascus. And God released a new anointing upon Paul. When Paul came, listen to me. You must have an encounter with Jehovah for you to wrestle against the pharaohs of this end time. There are too many Simons going on now. And you cannot be an ally and decide to go and confront them. No. Moses could only confront Pharaoh until he has met Jehovah in the burning bush. Spend time before the end of this year. Spend time. Some of you, your eyes open and you begin to see things in your church and you want to confront wickedness and you know your spirit man is weak. Don't even dare. Just keep quiet. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, it said what? Be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. Hallelujah. Until you are strong, don't confront some level of wickedness. To confront them is only asking for your early obituary. Be strong in the power of his might. How do you strengthen yourself? How do you empower yourself? How do you grow in God? Number one. Number one. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Zade balabado, shede bandele bebe apayos. Hallelujah. Somebody say repentance. Repentance. When you come to a place and you begin to turn your ways back to God, when you begin to align yourself, Job chapter 22. Hmm. Job 22. Let's go there quickly. Hallelujah. Zade Balabadosh. Thank you, Father. Verse 21. Job 22, verse 21. Hallelujah. It says, Acquit now thyself with him. Be at peace, thereby good shall return upon thee. Look at what it says in verse 23. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up, and thou if and thou shalt put away iniquity far away from that tabernacle. Putting what iniquity habitual sin far away from the tabernacle. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In sin must be away from your tabernacle. Not you sin, not, not you sin today, tomorrow you repent, you sin again, tomorrow you repent. No. If you are able to stay away from sin and you practice to be away from sin for one month. Your level of glory will be so strong and evident. Even witches cannot stand the light of your glory. Some of them can't even look into your eyes. Because they could see fire. Hallelujah. Number two. You must understand that in order for you to operate, your heavens must be opened. God opened Jesus' heavens before he was led into the wilderness. When your heavens are closed, you will not even know your enemy that is around your life. You are not able to discern the kind of voice speaking to your life. Or what voice is speaking to your life? As soon as the heavens was opened, a voice came. This is my son in whom I wear place. The heavens opened. When your heavens are open, you hear God's voice. When, 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 when your heavens are closed, you will still hear a voice. But the voice will be from Satan. But the person behind that voice will not be discerned because your heavens are closed. When your heavens are open, even when the voice comes, you will see who that person is. If your heavens are open, some people can use people's faces in your dream. But when your heavens are open, you identify who really is that person. Are you hearing me today? When your heavens are open, people will lie against you or even lie in front of you. But you're able to discern and read their hearts that this is 
they are, they, are, they, are, they are being forced to you. And you know, to open your heavens is by consistent prayer. You must be consistent in your prayers. To break open the heavens, thorough repentance, godly sorrow must be applied. You must be diligent, diligent, continually doing the work of the Lord. Amen? You must be, you must be a giver. Somebody say giver. giver. Sacrificial, you must make sacrificial offerings. Hallelujah. Sacrificial giving. Amen? You must make your, you must also give your tithes and your offerings. And you see God will begin to break open the heavens. But lastly, he must be a man that praises God. Offer praises to God. Be a worshiper. Be a worshiper. And as you do that, heavens will be open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why am I saying this to you now? Why am I saying this? Listen to me. Listen to me. You must develop what they call sincere humility. Sincere humility. I thought about pride in the past few 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 weeks ago. Go check it up on YouTube. It will help you. Hallelujah. I don't want to go into that again. But we must understand that every form of sin, prayerlessness, pride, bloodshed by abortion, all that stuff. Amen. Hallelujah. Falsehood, telling lies. Failure to give our tithe and offering. Hallelujah. Idolatry. Uh, territorial. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, walking, mingling ourselves with the agent of Satan. Hallelujah. And evil waters. All these things will close your heavens. All these will close your heavens. For instance, let me speak on idolatry. Do you know that some people now they work in such deception now that if God does not answer their prayers, they call a witch doctor in Africa and they send money to help them. They connect with those witch doctors in Africa and they send offerings to witch doctor to help them do something. A lady contacted me and said, Pastor, I want to send you an offering. But before I send you an offering, I want you to fast for me. Can you fast for me? And... Uh, Please, I will send an offering. I don't know. I will send you like some more, some money so you can help me fast. I said, ah. hey, as if I'm really looking for money, eh? And I'm not working with God. I will take that money and I will not fast. I said, who did this to you? He said, that's what happens. Many prophets, that's what they do. They say they will fast for me, so I'll give them money. You can't do that. If anybody tells you that, that is unscriptural and it's unbiblical. You don't fast for people. You fast for yourself. And you pray. If they want to bless, let them bless. Hallelujah. Idolatry is a bad spirit. Now, your heavens can be blocked. Do you know that when your heavens are open, angels are descending in your heavens to give you a message? And you can be sleeping on your bed and you have somebody who is sinful, who is agent of Satan sleeping beside you? And guess what? Their heavens are open to the demonic realm. And demons are coming to your life. Because of that person in your house. Thereby closing your heavens. That's why you wake up, you can't even see what you, you can't remember your dream. Because there is somebody that is in there, that is polluting the whole place. Territorial stronghold. Another one is territorial stronghold. You live by somebody who has an occultic house. You live by somebody who's an occult, who works in the occult. Or somebody who's, you live by a place, uh, there was a church in South Africa. They asked me to come and preach there. He's on the second floor. On the first floor, is an adult movie store. He's on the top floor. But on the first floor, it's an adult movie store. How can you stay there? That is a bad spirit of perversion that will haunt the ministry there. That is, a, that is the last thing you want to do, whether you are out of luck. Hallelujah. 
territorial spirit, stronghold. And when you dwell in such areas, you must be repenting because Lot had to leave his place because that attracted evil and judgment towards God. Some Christians were in Houston, but the Houston storm happened because of the sins of the land and it affected some Christians. Hallelujah. Evil altars, evil altars, evil altars. When there's an altar there, the reason I'm saying this is because here in Minnesota, we have a stronghold, very strong here in Minnesota. Yes, Mississippi River begins here in Minnesota. That's part of the stronghold. And there's this occultic group that came here. Their name is Ekanka. E CK, the Ek group. It's a very powerful demonic occultic people. Amen. That believe in you know you know what I was talking about bewitchment, bewitchment. When somebody is bewitched, that's what happens to them. A man that is bewitched, all of a sudden they see their soul coming out from their spirit, their body. They are being pulled out. And they begin to, they are being called or pulled or summoned to dark places. They can't control it. But every night they see themselves, this is happening to them. And it's becoming rampant. It's almost like a lot of people now are being polluted now because nobody's guarding their, their food, guarding their appetite. All kinds of things are happening now. A lot of initiations going on. Amen? On the, on the prayer line, on Facebook, I see a lot of people now. A lot of people now. Who are queen in the marine world. Queen. You know what I mean by queen? They have crown in their marine world. Now, they are called prophetesses and preachers. It's not one, not two. There are a lot of them now on Facebook. And they are the one that has so much crowd. So much crowd. I'm not here to speak or condemn. There are preachers who have been on fire for years. Their, their lives are almost in danger, almost arrested by the waters. How much more people who just got saved last year, got saved two years ago, but you were a club addict and you, you've never really had a tangible encounter. You just give your life to Jesus. You just start speaking in tongues. And that's enough. There are a lot of agents of Satan who God is rescuing with dramatic visitations just like Paul, you will know that this is genuine. But there are other ones that just have simple transformation. And they declare they are saved, they declare they are called by God. And everybody goes there. Someone was having an event, I was watching the whole thing. And he said, when we are done, make sure all of you go and take some rice and some, some, some meat and eat. I say, hey, initiation. Initiation to the demonic realm. People don't see it. Well, I mean, how can you fake it? Simon's in the church. Simon's in the church. That's it. I head my head. I say, oh my God, what is this? We need to be very careful. We need to be very... I tell you, it's not everybody who designed the Simon's. You must be a chosen one by God. And God will open your eyes to such revelations. Hmm. When the Antichrist come, you will see a lot of people fall for that CCCs. Just like this. Right now, everybody says, no, they will not. But the CC6. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Please, I beg of you that we begin to pray. God is awesome. And I'm, I'm hoping and believing that this month is your month. Halloween begins when? 30th? 
When is Halloween? Huh? I can't hear you. Oh, last day of the month. Okay. So Halloween begins on the last day of the month. Hallelujah. And 31st. The first of this month, October. Huh? Most of the time the preparation even begins before that. Before that. They begin to do what they call evil dedication. They begin to put evil materials on your on their streets. Everything. Right. Evil candies, incense, everything's been released. Companies are making all kinds of images, demonic stuff, just for in respect or honor to the spirit of the dead or the Halloween spirit. Minnesota is also the capital of Halloween. Minnesota, capital of Halloween of the world. Can you imagine? In this same city. Amen. So you must understand that when that heart begins to happen, don't think it's a fun, fun, fun play. Spirits have been released in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. The Ekanka Church, the Ek Church, where you have leaders coming from Africa and all around the, all around the world for this event. They have their convention, annual convention, that begins on the 25th of October, 20, 24th to the 25th. They begin to astral project to the heavenlies. Amen. The astral project to the heavenlies and begin to call down. It is crazy. It is crazy and messy. As they begin to project, they begin to attract demons from the second heavens. Hallelujah. I will not be surprised that such prayers is as prepared. Amen to avert, to turn around, to control the heavens, the heavenly realms. But I believe that we Christians, we're going to really pray hard and pray hard and stop the acts of the wicked, of the wicked. Amen? Sometimes it can snow in your city, rain in your city, and by your prayer, God will avert and turn the agenda of the devil. Hallelujah? The devil, somebody was working with the devil during the time of Job. The devil wasn't just manifesting himself. God was commanding Job. After that commanded the money to know his place. Because somebody else is commanding your money. Commanding the money to be in the place of wickedness. But we believers, we need to turn things around. Hallelujah. I beg of you, before the Halloween starts, start declaring the blood in your neighborhood, in your household. If you begin to see cats, you begin to see animals appearing in your neighborhood. Amen. Take your oil, put it in the water, take salt, begin to declare the blood. Just begin to sprinkle it out. Sprinkle it out. Go around your house like three times. I declare the blood in my neighborhood. I arrest every familiar spirit. I bind you by the power of the blood. Release it. Are you hearing me today? And you will see massive grace upon your life. In Jesus' name. Do you receive this word today? hallelujah amen amen i bless god for his love and his glory thank you lord jesus for an encounter today i am praying that the hand of god will rest upon everybody in the name of jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah amen i want to say this to you to, i want to say this to somebody too amen i want to say this to somebody too this is um hallelujah remember what we read in the book of um genesis I mean, if you remember that, in the book of Genesis. Let me go back there again. The book of Genesis. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. This is the last thing, amen, that we must understand. The Bible says, And Noah built an altar to the Lord. He built an altar to the Lord. I want many of you who really, really, really want to set up your altar. The Bible says on the 10th month, he raised up an altar before God. Amen. Everyone, I want us to be able to give an offering or a tithe or uh, a seed to the Lord. Build an altar to the Lord. Hallelujah. If you're on Periscope, on WhatsApp, amen, you need the PayPal address, amen, text it, amen, text it to me, whatever it is. The PayPal, uh, the PayPal will be, will be posted on WhatsApp. Amen. Send an offering or a tithe or a seed for this month of October. Hallelujah. It is for the kingdom. And these offerings is your blood, is your sweat. And God will use this blood as a sacrifice to speak on your behalf. Amen. To arrest every battle that has been released against your life. 
to stop the plan of the devil hallelujah i go there quickly amen thank you lord look at what it says quickly before we go in verse 20 no one built an, uh, an altar unto the lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offering to the to the lord amen and the lord smelled the sweet savour and the lord said in his heart i will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake when you release these offerings when you release this seed whether it's fifty dollars sixty dollars hundred dollars whatever seed you release amen god will begin to smell the savour in his heart and he says i will no more curse the ground i will no more curse the ground you will begin to bless your ground why amen this altar was released no one did it and we be, and god smelt it and received it amen hallelujah well god bless you so much thank god amen hallelujah we don't forget amen in the next few days amen we'll be releasing the flyer sorry for the, the, the delay many of you amen still waiting to book your flight please go ahead amen hallelujah the event will begin on friday i remember i said on saturday to begin on friday amen hallelujah friday which is going to be on the 10th 11th and the 12th you don't want to miss it saturday believe in the morning we're going to be doing foot washing with oil with oil with oil amen god will bait you with five feet with oil amen and you're going to be begin to experience open doors there's god has been preparing us for to to prepare ourselves so that there's going to be a downpour of his glory amen there's going to be a real fire that will come upon your life the spirit of prayer will be released activated inside of you amen you're going to walk in a new level of authority that you've never seen in your life i am telling you god literally will visit you in this event amen hallelujah when the oil comes upon you you're going to begin to walk in a common speed and you're going to experience open doors you will not just walk anyhow walk into traps into bondage or slavery no you walk into divine liberty the crusade is going to be in new york new york hallelujah it's going to be in new york from the 10th to the 12th it's going to be very powerful colossal bloody amen hallelujah and god will speak directly to you in jesus name amen have you received this prayer today i believe that you are all is well with you and i pray that the hand of jehovah is, is being released over your soul and your spirit man amen we're gonna have some t-shirts amen hallelujah we're gonna have some t-shirts it's gonna be a beautiful t-shirt amen hallelujah so you guys get ready it's gonna be some extra bonanza glory amen hallelujah hallelujah the title of the conference is gonna be glory surge glory surge hallelujah amen glory to god glory so so get ready for what it's about to do amen invite your friends in jesus name hallelujah any quick question before we go any quick question before we go nobody okay all right praise god any question on uh, on the periscope hallelujah amen god bless everyone today amen Hallelujah. What? Any question quickly? Uh -huh. All right. Well, God bless. Let's share the grace quickly before we go. The grace of Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in God's house forever and ever. Amen. God bless you guys. Love you guys. Bye bye. Oh, God bless you. Crows are off. Call me and then we pray about it. My number is 612 701 5983. 612 701 5983. God bless you.
Haleluya. All right, bye bye. God bless you. Father, you reign greater you. Go ahead. Come. Praise. Worthy to be praised. Father, you reign. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.